Like a potter working on a lump of clay, God molds, shapes and prepares us before He releases us into the purpose He has for our lives. Today on Living Strong, you will learn the importance of God's preparation process and the tools He uses to shape and mold us. so that we can be ready to fulfill His plans. From a heart that's broken in two By what you don't see The person in the mirror Doesn't look like a magazine Oh, but when I look at you It's clear to me That I can see the fingerprints of God When I look at you I can see the fingerprints of God and I know it's true, you're a masterpiece that all creation quietly applauds. And you're covered with the fingerprints of God. Never has there been, and never again will there be another you. Fashioned by God's hand and perfectly planned to be just who you are. And what He's been creating since the first beat of your heart is a living, breathing, priceless work of art. And I can see the fingerprints of God when I look at you. I And I know it's true, you're a masterpiece that all creation quietly applauds. And you're covered with the fingerprints of God. Just look at you. You're a wonder in the making And God's not through, no In fact, He's just getting started And I can see the fingerprints of God When I look at you, I can see the fingerprints of God And I know it's true, you're a masterpiece that all creation quietly applaud and you're covered with the fingerprints of God yeah, yeah. you're covered with the fingerprints of God We've been uh, doing this interesting series on fulfilling and recognizing God's purpose for our lives. And uh, we've emphasized in this series of teaching the fact that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. None of us are an accident, but we are all here by God's design for God's purpose, a specific purpose that He has for our lives. We've also addressed several ways by which we could recognize God's plan and purpose. We've uh, talked about some of these uh, in the previous, seri uh, previous messages. Uh, uh, the, the important aspect of God's uh, purpose for our lives, which we want to address right now, is, to, is the preparation process that God takes us through. 
God leads us through a time of preparation, a process of preparation, before he releases us into fulfilling what he has appointed or, or uh, planned for our lives. So we want to talk about this and understand God's preparation process. Some questions we can ask uh, uh, at the outset is, what does God want to accomplish through the preparation process? I mean, why would God even have a preparation process? What is he seeking to accomplish through that? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 through 21, Paul writes, he says, The foundation of God stands firm, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse 20, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, that is from whatever is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. What do we see here in this passage? We understand that you know, God really wants to prepare us so that we could become vessels of honor, vessels that bring honor to the Lord, vessels of dignity. And God, in, the, in, in, in this process, He wants us to be sanctified or set apart for Him. He wants us to become fit for the Master's use. And He wants us to become equipped or ready for every good work that He has for our lives. So really, in God's preparation process, He's seeking to accomplish these things. And as we look in Scripture and look at different people in the Bible, we find that God takes them through a, a, a certain period of preparation. Now, there is no set time or there is no set method that God will take us through uh, in order to prepare us. But we see the fact that God does prepare us and he does take us through uh, stages of development. Moses, for example, uh, he, was be he was being raised. Uh, his parents knew that he was a child uh, that was destined for uh, divine purpose. And he was being raised in uh, Pharaoh's home. And when he was about 40 years of age, Moses understood his purpose. He understood that God had raised him up to be a deliverer. So there was a recognizing of God's purpose for his life. Unfortunately, he stepped in to uh, attempt that on his own. And there was another, peer, another period of 40 years that he had to wait before he, God could send him back to start the assignment for his life. Now, of course, we could say that, you know, that 40 year delay was part of his own doing because he went and killed um, uh, an Egyptian and, and it wasn't necessary for him to do that at that point but he did it and that caused a, pro a prolonged delay in his life but yet through that God worked in him and eventually God sent him back to fulfill his life assignment or life dream. David was a, another example. As a teenage boy he was anointed by Samuel saying you're going to be the next king of Israel. David knew that. He had early signs of that happening in his life. Uh, people recognized David as a great psalmist, as a great warrior. And uh, uh, he even went out and killed Goliath, uh, whom the, uh, uh, the rest of the army of Israel was afraid to go and face. David went and killed Goliath, and he became a national hero, a national champ champion for many people. And although he had this destiny uh, spoken over his life, that he was going to be the ki next king of Israel, what we see in David's life is that Saul was after him. Saul threatened his life. And so David, for the next five, six years of his life, was living in caves and living as a vagabond. And he spent his time in caves. And, and during this time, however, God helped him raise up a mighty army. And eventually we read about David when he, at, the, at the age of 30, at the age of 23, he came in to Judah. He became king of Judah. And at the age of 30, he was made king of all Israel. So there was a time of a five, six years that David just was away in caves and, 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 and it seemed like uh, the God's, God's call on his life would not be fulfilled, but eventually God brought him back. But in that time when he was away, God actually helped him get mighty warriors together ready for his uh, rule. Same thing in the life of Paul. All that the age, he must, Paul must have been about 33 years of age when he had this encounter with the Lord and, uh, uh, and, and gave his heart to Jesus. And at that point, God 
spoke, the Lord Jesus spoke over his life, saying that he was called to minister to kings and take his name uh, to, uh, to people in authority and, and suffer great things for the Lord. But what do we see in Paul's life? We see that uh, he spent probably the next 17 years of his life in doing things that we don't even have a record of. Three years in, uh, probably he spent the, the next three years in, uh, in uh, Tarsus, 13 years out in the deserts of Arabia. And then he's, he's brought back and, and then he spent some initial time in, in Antioch. So uh, about 17 years elapsed from, the, from his Damascus Road experience with Jesus before he's finally released into his apostolic ministry to go fulfill it. God takes him, and during the 17 years, he received a lot of revelation, received a lot of understanding of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and began to connect Old Testament scripture with the revelation of Jesus Christ that he was receiving in his heart. So God prepared him I I that way, and then finally released him uh, into his uh, call, into his destiny. So the preparation process of God varies in each one of our lives, but God definitely equips us and gets us ready. There are two important things that God desires to accomplish in this preparation process that we must be aware of. God wants to see godly character developed in us. When the Bible says he wants us to be vessels of honor, it's talking about godly character. Character that is of uh, that high value. He wants us to uh, make us these vessels that are set apart, holy for God, uh, which, which God can then use. So, Understand that the development of, of character, the strength of character, is an important objective that God has in mind during this preparation process. Another important thing that God desires to develop in our lives through the preparation process is maturity in all areas. God wants to see maturity, us coming to a place of maturity in all areas. In Ephesians chapter 4, at, in at least two places, in verse 13 and again in verse 15, Paul talks about believers coming to a place of maturity. In verse 13, he says, We must all come to a perfect man or, or a mature man, which is the full measure of the stature of Christ. And again in verse 15, he says he want, that God wants us to grow up in all things to be like Jesus. So God seeks to bring maturity or development in all areas of our lives, in our walk with God, in our relationships with people, in our gifts, in our callings. He wants to see us grow uh, and develop. So character development and, uh, develop and maturity, coming to a place where we're able to discern right and wrong, able to make right decisions, uh, able to work with people. Uh, these are things that are important in the preparation process. How does God prepare us? What tools, if you will, does God use to prepare us and that, that he works away on our lives during this preparation process? God's word is very important. Through the Holy Scriptures, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, tell us we are made complete and we are equipped for every good work. So the word of God is an important tool, an important part of this preparation process. The work of the Holy Spirit, as 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, we are changed by the Spirit from glory to glory. So the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives, as we in, um, give Him the room and the space to work in our lives, correct us and see us change into the very image of God, that's very important in our lives. Other people that God, God will use other people. People around us, people who who, whom we associate with, whom we relate to. God uses people around us to bring about maturity, to bring about growth in our lives, to sharpen us, to encourage us, to correct us, uh, to nurture us. So God uses other people. And God also uses life experiences. As we go through various life experiences, through them we learn more about God. We can grow, we develop skills, we develop strength, we develop uh, maturity, or we are, a, we are conformed to the image of Christ. So the life experiences uh, are invaluable. Just walking with God, developing a history with God is so important. So these are different ways that God uses, uh, tools that God uses uh, to prepare us. Now, there are certain things that we must keep in mind as we go through God's preparation process, how do we journey with God through the preparation? 
You know, just as a potter works on a lump of clay, when the potter begins to work with that lump of clay, he has a desired end in mind. He can see what this lump of clay is going to become. It's going to become a wonderful vessel or, or something that he has in mind. And he puts this lump of clay on the wheel and he begins to shape it. It may take some time. It may uh, uh, take some spinning around on the wheel and some molding and maybe some remolding and reshaping. And once he's got the, uh, the lump of clay into the desired shape, he then puts it in the oven to bake it, to make it strong, uh, to bring it, up, bring it up to the, uh, the strength that he desires it to be. So there is a process. And just as the potter works on the clay, the Bible teaches us that God is the potter and we are the clay and God works in our lives in a similar manner before he, we, he, we become the kind of people that he wants us to be, the vessels that he wants us to be. And here are certain things that we must keep in mind as we work with God, as we journey with God through the preparation process. It's important for us to cooperate with God as God works in our lives, meaning yield to God, yield to the changes, accommodate the alignments and the adjustments that he's bringing into your life and mine. We, if we are stubborn, we are unwilling to change, unwilling to receive correction and the, and the, and the working of God in our lives, we're only going to delay the fulfilling of God's plan and purposes. Our attitude matters as we go through this process. Sometimes things that, that we desire may not necessarily come as quickly as we wanted to. Sometimes things that we are expecting to happen may not happen the way we wanted to. And yet throughout this, we keep our eyes on that goal, that dream that God has put in our hearts. That one day we will become what he wants us to be and begin to accomplish the things he has called us to accomplish. And so maintaining a proper attitude throughout the process is so important for us. Another important thing to know is that consistency is where the power is. We must maintain consistency in the things that God has taught us. Continue in the things he has uh, imparted into our lives. Uh, keep at it. Be faithful with the things that God has uh, uh, taught us and imparted to us so that we can build line upon line, layer upon layer, build and progress into what God wants us. Uh, another important thing about working with God in the preparation process is learning to be faithful in little things. This is the way the kingdom of God works. As God finds us faithful in small things, he then creates opportunity and room to elevate us to the next level. You know, many of us are eager to rise up to, new, to, to higher levels and we want to skip the intermediate levels. In God's kingdom, there are no elevators. Everybody has a ladder to climb. And we climb one step at a time. God takes us step by step. And when he finds us faithful in little things, he promotes us to greater things. And when we are faithful at that level, he then raises us up to the next level. As we journey to, with God, we must also be aware of complacency. You know, the only way to grow is to stretch. Go beyond yourself. Many times we restrain ourselves, maybe out of fear or sometimes unintentionally. We confine ourselves, we put ceilings on ourselves or limitations on ourselves and we stay within what we are comfortable. But in order to grow, you need to stretch. In order to reach the next level, you've got to stretch. And stretching is never easy. It's always painful. But every time you stretch, you're growing. You're increasing capacity. You're increasing your ability to take on greater levels. So beware of complacency in the preparation process. Continually be in a mode where you're willing to stretch and reach for higher things. And you find that in Paul's statement when he says in Philippians 3.12, he says, I press on to lay a hold of that for which Jesus laid a hold of me. He's pressing on. There is a sense of pushing. There's a sense of going beyond the comfortable. As he says, I'm pressing toward that for which Jesus has laid a hold of me. Keep in mind that many times uh, the greater the call, the greater the plan, the greater is the preparation that you'll have to go through. Uh, we see that in the natural world, that if you want to reach certain levels, there are higher degrees for you to, uh, um, to um, achieve or 
uh, pass and, and, then, and then you reach certain levels. The same thing in God's kingdom. The greater the call, there's going to be a greater preparation in order to get you ready for that. So don't be hasty. Let each pre- season of preparation run its full course. Don't be hasty to jump out of one preparation before God has worked in you that which he wants to work in you. Maybe it's a season where you're working under somebody else's leadership. Work with them because once you're through with that, then God can set you up as a leader and prepare you for, for, for leading others. But if you jump out of that season ahead of time, it could be harmful. It could be harmful to yourself. It could be harmful to others. You would, you would not be ready. Uh, to be in a position of leadership to lead others. And stay for in within the realm of what God has designed you to be. You know, many of us get very frustrated as we seek to fulfill the plan of God because we want to be what somebody else is rather than being what God has designed us to be. God designed each one of you unique. He gave you grace and gifting in line with the purpose. And as you align His grace and gift for His purpose, His power will automatically flow through your life. But the problem with many of us is that we want to be somebody else. We want to be something we are not designed to be. We want to accomplish things we are not graced and gifted for. We want the power of God to flow in a certain way that is not aligned to His purpose. And then we don't see these things happening and we become very frustrated. So uh, it's just essential for us to learn to flow according to God's design. Just be who God designed you to be. Flow in His grace and His gift towards His purpose, and then you will see the power of God flowing through your life. So, very, in, in, in these few moments, we've, we've tried to understand God's preparation process. The fact that God prepares us by His Word, by His Spirit, through people, through life circumstances, to bring about godly character and maturity before He can release us to fulfill what He has appointed for our lives. I want to encourage you to journey with God through His preparation process. Because as you walk with God, He, like the potter, will surely shape your life and make you into a vessel of honor fit for the master's use and fully equipped for every good work. Today's teaching is an excerpt from the free publication called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. You can download this free publication for your personal study from our church website www.apcwo.org or request a free printed copy by sending an email to tv at apcwl.org. Our website also has several other free resources, including MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and other free publications that you can download and use. Thank you for watching Living Strong, where we are being equipped to live life the Jesus way. We trust that these programs coming your way are enriching your life, and we'd really love to hear from you. Uh, Drop us an email if you can. Uh, Make it a point to visit our website, where you can download our free resources, our MP3 sermons, uh, and uh, publications that you could use for for developing your spiritual life. Uh, Let's just pray together before we end the program today. Father, we just thank you that you are at work in each of our lives. As the part of working on the clay, you're working on each one of us. We pray your grace and your strength, Lord, into those watching this program, that we will learn to yield and we will learn to journey with you so that we could become what you're shaping us to be. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to sharing with you our next episode.
coming from a heart that's broken in two by what you don't see. The person in the mirror doesn't look like a magazine. Oh, but when I look at you, it's clear to me that I can see the fingerprints of God. When I look at you, I can see the fingerprints of God. And I know it's true, you're a masterpiece that all creation quietly applauds. And you're covered with the fingerprints of God. Never has there been, and never again. Will there be another you Fashioned by God's hand And perfectly planned To be just who you are And what he's been creating Since the first beat of your heart Is a living, breathing, priceless work of art And I can see the fingerprints of God When I look at you I can see the fingerprints of God And I know it's true You're a masterpiece that all creation Quietly applauds And you're covered with the fingerprints of God Just look at you You're a wonder in the making And God's not through, no In fact, He's just getting started